We're given the function y equals negative 3 plus 2 times the square root of 1 minus 1 third x, and we're asked to graph the, uh, the function, but first to do certain other steps. We need to take a disciplined approach to this. We will determine the parent function, state the argument of that function, rearrange the argument if necessary to determine the values of k and d, which give information about horizontal reflections, uh, stretches or compressions, as well as possible translations. Then we'll rearrange the function equation if necessary to determine the values of a and c, and then we'll state the transformations in an appropriate order. So, um, we'll then try to graph it in three different ways. We'll uh, graph each transformation in the appropriate order. Second method will be a little more direct. We'll use a chart to determine coordinates of the function given. The third method will be pretty direct as well. We're going to use the transformation formula, which I like to call the machine, to determine the coordinates of the function given, then we'll graph. But first we have to know what the parent function is, and in this case it's y equals root x. That's a pretty straightforward function, not too difficult, and it gives a good starting place for us to do our uh, graphing. Our argument is 1 minus 1 third x, and we can rearrange that so that our argument is expressed in the form k times x minus d. Well, this tells us that k is negative a third and d equals 3. That gives important information about horizontal transformations. We then can determine uh, vertical transformations by rearranging the function if necessary. Um, and what we can do after we factor out uh, the argument to determine the k and d values is we can rearrange the expression, bring the negative 3 term to the far side, and we can say that um, our k value is negative a third, d is 3, a is 2, and c is negative 3. And what that tells us is that the verbal description of transformations is as follows. k is negative a third. The negative k value means there's a reflection in the y-axis. The value of one-third means that, or sorry, the value of negative one-third means that we're going to have a horizontal stretch, counterintuitive in a way, but a horizontal stretch by a factor of three. We take the absolute value of the reciprocal for k. The d value of three tells us we'll have a translation three units to the right. The a value of two is consistent with what one might intuitively think, a vertical stretch by a factor of two, and a c value of negative three means a translation of three units down. So we can then show each transformation individually. Now this isn't the most efficient way of doing it, but it works. And it gives us a good visual as to what the effects of the various uh, transformations are. We start with the parent function. We then show the first um, transformation which we chose to state, which is a reflection in the y-axis. A reflection in the y-axis means we leave the y-coordinates the same, but take the negative value of each x-coordinate. So you'll see here that we've done that with each coordinate pair, taking the negative x-value. Now we discard the black curve and focus on the blue. And that is a curve of y equals negative root x. One of our five transformations is now dealt with. Now, in the next one, we have that curve still, but now we're going to consider the effect of the horizontal stretch by a factor of 3. That was the second transformation that we stated. Well, what that does is it stretches us out, stretches us out horizontally. So we multiply each x-coordinate by 3. So 0, 0 stays at uh, 0, 0. But negative 1, for instance, will become negative 3, 1. Negative 4, 2 becomes negative 12, 2 discard that blue curve, we're done with it now, and focus on the green. And that is what our curve looks like, two transformations into the process. Now what we want to do is consider what happens when we translate our curve to the right three units. Well, every one of these points now has to have three, uh, three units added to the x-coordinate. The y-coordinate remains unchanged because this is not a vertical transformation, it's a horizontal transformation. Uh, now what we do, we discard the green curve and consider the pink. Now we're three transformations into our five transformation process. What we now want to do is consider the pink curve, 
but also consider the vertical stretch by a factor of 2, which is uh, indicated by that a value of 2. Well, what that is, is, um, is a process of multiplying each y coordinate by 2. 3, 0 stays at 3, 0. 0, 1 becomes 0, 2. Negative 9, 2 becomes negative 9, 4. These are vertical transformations, not horizontal, so the x is unaffected, the x-coordinates. We get this blue curve. Now this is us four transformations into our five transformation process. Our last transformation is going to be a translation down three units as indicated by this negative three out here. So what we do is translate everything down three units, subtract three from every y-coordinate, Discard the blue curve, graph the red, and that is our final graphed function. Now, perhaps a quicker way of doing this, oh man, look at that, that's all the curves uh, in one picture. Now, perhaps a quicker way of doing this is to consider what we call a table method. In this case, or a chart method, what we do is consider the three points on the parent function, and then we consider the effect of every one of these variables. When the k value is negative a third, we divide each x-coordinate by negative a third. That has the impact of reflecting in the y-axis and horizontally stretching by a factor of 3. We then add a value of 3 to each x-coordinate for the horizontal translation. We then multiply each y-coordinate by 2 for the vertical stretch and we subtract 3 from each y-coordinate for the vertical translation down 3 units. What that does is it gives us 3 points on the uh, function given, and now we go back and consider what that would look like. It's always good in these circumstances, although not vital, but it's a, not a bad idea, to graph the parent function, then to graph the points on the image curve, then, to ask ourselves, what's the nature of the parent function? What we do is we start at the point 0, 0, and shoot through the other points, eventually becoming more and more horizontal. So we go to the image of the origin, which is, in our case, 3, negative 3, and we're now going to follow the same process, shoot through the other points, and eventually become more horizontal. Another method of doing it, and this is what we call method 3, and it was in part H, was what we call the machine, the transformation formula. And it's given by xy maps on to x over k plus d, ay plus c. Well, we already know our a, k, d, and c values. So we take our original points on the parent function, and we put them through the machine. 0, 0 has an x value of 0 and a y value of 0, so we sub those in for the x and y values. 1, 1 has an x value of 1 and a y value of 1, so we sub those in for the x and y values, still using this machine, putting in the k, the d, the a, and the c values elsewhere. So we get the images this way. It's kind of a quicker way of dealing with the chart. 4, 2 means we sub in the 4 value for x and the 2 value for y, but keep all of the other values the same in our formula. And what that does is it gives us our three coordinate points, uh, our three points, excuse me, the coordinates of them on our transform function. And so again, just like the chart method, if we choose to, we can graph the parent to get an idea, remind ourselves what it looks like, graph the points on the three, uh, graph the three points on the transformed curve, and then plot them.